This video is not suited for children. No. Not Sonic. Not that fanbase. The Thomas and the Tugs fanbase is too much already. No. No. No! Ugh. Where am I? Ah, you finally woke up. Ben? Where am I? Why am I tied up? And why are you in a different art style than is normally present on my channel? These things do not matter. You promised me a sub dub spotlight, Will. All that time ago after I made one for you? So where is it? Well, I was going to make it, but then there was uni work and I started making film reviews and... Alright, I got lazy. Besides, you moved to a new channel, Dynamic Dynamite Go Subscribe, he does some pretty nifty art, so I don't have much footage to work with. Well then, seeing how you're not making my sub dub spotlight anytime soon, how about you review a film of my choosing? I mean, you don't really have a choice. Ugh, fine, what do you want me to review? Transformers? Legion of Superheroes? More Thomas? Oh god, I couldn't do another Thomas review, that fanbase scares me too much. No. I want you to do a film that will rile up an even worse fanbase. Oh god, is it Sonic? It's Sonic. God damn it. I'll do any other film or niche show, but not Sonic. Do I have any other choices? Sonic, or I'll make you watch the American version of the Magic Roundabout on loop until you like it. You wouldn't. I drew this room. I can do anything I want. Somebody pull a lever, or press a button or something! Okay, this one looks like it's for the radio, this is for the AC, and... Oh Christ, Sonic it is then! I guess we all know what Sonic is. Essentially a video game metaphor for a rock star. Hit it big with his first few releases, became quite popular for a while before losing his touch with reality and eventually fell behind until he faded into obscurity with only his concerts now populated by people who were either blinded by nostalgia or going through a midlife crisis. Those Sonic games have been... lacklustre in quality in recent years, Sonic is no stranger to dabbling in other forms of media such as comics, no VA movie and the small screen with multiple TV shows and stories centered around the adventures of the little blue bugger. Of course, because Detective Pikachu got its own adaptation to the big screen and with Nintendo working on an animated Mario movie, Sega followed suit and decided to make a film starring everyone's favourite blue speed rodent. The film was directed by Jeff Fowler, who's known to have some writing and directing chops as well as in visual effects. As you're all aware, this film had a pretty rocky reception when the first trailer was announced. For the future viewers who are unsure what I am talking about, when the first Sonic trailer was released in late April of 2019, Sonic's design was received very... poorly. <coughs> the film was supposed to come out in November of that year, but the backlash Sega and Paramount received for Sonic's uncanny appearance made them push the film back another four months into February of 2020 while they reworked Sonic's look. This move did win favour over me, as it isn't very often studios act on backlash or criticism from the general audience. So, it seems fair to give this film a chance. Jeff, you're a visual effects artist, how did you fuck up this badly? However, because I know the Sonic fanbase is one of the more questionable ones, I have with me my resident Sonic expert, so I don't have to wade too deep into the questionably coloured waters of the Sonic fanbase. Screw you. You know the Sonic fanbase is cringe, and I don't want that sticking to my channel. I just need you as a reference to tell me if the characters are true to how they are in the laws of the game or whatever. First of all, not all fans are that bad, and some of the DeviantArt stuff is decently done. Secondly, just get on with the review, and third, fuck you. Fine. Spoilers ahead, by the way, so skip to the time on screen now if you want to hear my opinion of the film without me giving away the entire plot. We open up and the film immediately does the So, I bet you're wondering how I got here trope with Sonic in the middle of an explosive chase with Robotnik. It is here I immediately started to regret waking up that morning to see this film. Mm-hmm. Who got you in for free? <sighs> You did get me in for free, but you got me to watch the Sonic movie, so we'll call it even. <laughs> anyway, skip back a few years and we see baby Sonic running around his home world without a care. He was apparently born with special powers and is told by his guardian owl to keep them secret or else he'll be hunted for them. I wouldn't mind the film establishing this if it wasn't all explained with a narration by Sonic who, annoyingly, so far hasn't shut up. Unfortunately for Sonic, some masked echidnas come along to try and kill him, likely following the blue trail he always seems to carelessly leave behind him. 
Some arrows are fired, Owl Lady tries to fly away and eventually gets shot, leading to her hitting the floor. She hastily explains these ring MacGuffins and sends Sonic through to Earth as she holds off the approaching Echidnas. The ring disappears and Baby Sonic is left alone on Earth. Back to our resident Sonic expert, how was that for an intro to the film? Alright, but I don't know who that Owl Lady is. What? Seriously, she's not a character that exists in any of the Sonic comic books or shows. They just made her up for the film. Seriously? Damn, guess they couldn't just be asked working with any of the existing canon. This bodes well for the rest of the film. Cut to years later and Sonic is still narrating everything that's happening, explaining that he's living happily alone on Earth, but stalks outside this one couple's house watching them, so he's basically their friend without them knowing. Luckily for Sonic, he's a cartoonish hedgehog, so it's not as creepy or weird that he's stalking outside this married couple's house. Also, he finally starts to shut up, thank Christ. Literally, all we've had so far is just a massive exposition dump. It delivers enough story information to fill the first act of a film in five minutes. Yeah! Gotta expose fast! So the plot finally starts to get going, and we meet the human character of Good Cop, played by Cyclops. I mean... James Marmalade. He's the friendly officer in the small town of Green Hill, very subtle name drop, who might be getting a promotion to be a cop in San Francisco. The fact that he thinks working and living in San Francisco is an upgrade already clues us into the fact that he's an imbecile. Sonic messes around with Good Cop's speedometer for a minute until it's time for him to go home. He gets angry at some raccoons in the trash and meets his generically written wife, who's happy to celebrate his promotion. Wife says she's already finding a place to live in San Francisco and points to a random Zillow brand placement, explaining that she's going to stay with her sister in San Francisco for a few days, looking for apartments to live in. Some other stuff happens, Sonic gets a little sad that Good Cop might be moving away, I can't really remember, and we eventually get to Sonic watching a baseball game, wishing he had friends. After everyone's gone home, he plays a game all by himself and gets depressed that he's all alone. Then for some reason he just starts running in circles around the baseball court until he just releases an EMP. Then he shits himself and goes back to his hole. Alright, what the actual fuck? What? He just gets sad and runs in a circle. Why? Like, there's no reason for it. Well, in some of the comics and lore, he does run super fast when he's sad. It's like a vent for him. Yeah, but why in a circle? Why not run in a straight line all the way home or something? And it's not clearly indicated that's what he does when he's sad, it's just something he did. I mean, he ran after his owl mom died. Yeah, but not in a circle. What's your point? I don't know. I think I've confused myself too much trying to figure this film out. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. What is there to figure out? Touché! Anywho, the town loses power and some government people discuss how to go about investigating it when one of them gets the bright idea to send in the only reason I forced myself willingly chose to review this film. Enter Jim Carrey, who is supposed to be playing Dr. Robotnik, but let's be real here, it's just Jim Carrey hamming it up. Don't get me wrong, while he is pretty much the only thing I really like about this film, he's just a massive dick throughout the whole thing. Like, he just steps out of his Tesla lorry and just chats mad shit towards this military officer, basically going on about how he doesn't like people because his robots are so much better. That's basically his entire character. So, so basically, basically evil you Ace Ventura. Ventura. Anyway, Robotnik sends out his egg-shaped robots and they eventually come across a Sonic footprint. Sonic spots one of the robots and heads home, realising he could get caught any minute. He grabs his stuff, picks up his bag of ring MacGuffins, reminding us that they teleport people to different planets and shit, and decides to run to Officer Man's house, because that's where he feels safe, I think? Anyway, Officer Man is at home on the phone to his wife so they could shove in a product placement for Olive Garden, and he thinks he hears some raccoons in the trash again. So he grabs his wife's trank gun, who is a vet by the way, and heads into the garage to sort things out the semi-American way. He kicks in the door just as Sonic is about to head out, and naturally freaks out and shoots the little shit. Then, in what I can only assume is a reason totally pulled out of the writer's ass for plot convenience, Sonic drops a ring that leads to San Francisco because he read it off of the shirt Good Cop was wearing. He then drops the bag of rings through the hole and it lands on top of a building before it closes and leaves Sonic ringless and knocked out. <sighs> this is bullshit. How do you mean? That entire scenario is so fucking contrived, I cannot even begin to explain how bullshit it is. Good Cop was conveniently wearing a San Francisco shirt, just as Sonic was about to throw down a ring to a different planet. Then, for no reason, he reads the shirt like that's a priority after being shot and starts to think about San Francisco, just in time to drop the rings through onto the roof of that building. Tell me that isn't bullshit. 
There are many famous movies that have contrived plots when you think about it. Such as? In every Star Wars trilogy, the Chosen One knows jack shit about the Force, yet is the most skilled at using it. Don't get me started on the prequels. How dare you? The prequels are a goldmine for memes. Fuck you, I can disrespect any film I want. This is my channel, I'm the one who does the dissing around here. Yeah, but who's tied up? Touché. As expected, Good Cop is freaking out about the fact he has an alien humanoid blue hedgehog in his garage and shoves him in a dog cage. Sonic wakes up and explains his scenario to Good Cop, pleading that Good Cop is a very good and kind man so he'll help Sonic get his rings back while on the run from the government. Just as Good Cop is considering his choices, Jim Carrey tracks down Sonic to the house and starts to question Good Cop for the location of Sonic. Good Cop hides Sonic and tries to deter Jim Carrey from entering his house, but eventually Jim gets tired of the bullshit and threatens to kill Good Cop with his egg robot. Sonic shows himself and, in the confusion, Good Cop decks Jim Carrey. Both flee while Jim recovers and finds one of Sonic's quills on the floor, which seems to be electrical for some reason. Jim announces to his assistant that he intends to capture and dissect Sonic to find the source of his power or whatever because creativity is a rapidly depleting resource when it comes to villains. Meanwhile, Good Cop is beginning to question his decision to help Sonic already, leading to an argument between the two because, naturally, Good Cop is hesitant to run from the government just to save this freaky little thing. He kicks Sonic out of his car and tells him to find his own way to San Francisco. Sonic then runs off and instantly comes back soaking wet, saying he doesn't know where to go and that he can't do it alone or some crap. Why he didn't just follow the road that they were heading down anyway is beyond me. Good Cop gives in and decides to take Sonic to San Francisco because the poor bastard can't say no to save his life. We get a few more minutes of Sonic trying to be funny but only being annoying as usual while Jim Egg the Man does some evil science stuff. Eventually, Sonic and Good Cop pull over to get some gas and snacks for the road. While Good Cop is going to pay, Sonic sees a biker bar with a bunch of people doing stunts outside for some reason and just can't resist going to look at it. Because of course, all childish characters in these films can never seem to grasp the importance of staying out of sight. Good Cop comes back to find the car empty and figures Sonic is in the bar. He heads in and finds Sonic looking around dressed in a shitty disguise that anyone even with a damaged frontal lobe could see through. Good Cop asks Sonic what the fuck he's doing, but Sonic is all like, please, I've never been in a bar before. So they just chill in the bar for a bit, despite the fact the entire American government is now likely looking for them. They talk about things that make them happy and decide to do some stuff on Sonic's bucket list before he has to leave Earth. After some shenanigans, a bar fight erupts and before shit hits the fan, Sonic just stops time Quicksilver style as he rips off that one scene from X-Men as he runs around messing around with bar patrons. As someone who understands physics, everything Sonic does should theoretically kill everyone he touches, but this is a kid's film and that wouldn't be as kid friendly. Time starts again and everyone hits the floor, leaving Sonic and Good Cop free to hightail it out of there. It's nitpick time. Sonic's speed is really inconsistent throughout the whole film. Like at the start of the film he was clocking 300 miles an hour and then he's slower in some scenes but then during the baseball scene he's fast enough to be in like 5 places at once, then he's not fast enough to dodge a tractor? And I know the whole, he becomes super fast when he's supercharged, but in those scenes, including the bar fight, he was not supercharged, yet he possesses almost time-stopping speed. It's just inconsistent and overly convenient for the plot. It is stated multiple times throughout the film that he cannot control his powers, so the inaccuracy has a valid excuse. Personally, having it happen at more random times rather than whenever it's story convenient would have been more interesting to see. Well, we've seen other heroes with similar abilities do the exact same thing, such as The Flash, but this is set early in Sonic's quote-unquote career as a hero and has had some time to learn most of his abilities, but he still has an excuse to be rusty. Yeah, well the plot and your excuses can suck my ass. Good Cop and Sonic stop at a motel for the night where they discuss the events of the evening and there's some heartwarming talk before Sonic passes out. Good Cop flicks on the news to find out he's being reported as a domestic terrorist and that his whole life is about to get a whole lot harder. Next day, Jim Carrey and his assistant, who 
definitely gets off at being yelled at now that I'm thinking about it. Stop by the bar that Sonic wrecked the previous night and figure out which way they went. Satisfied, Jim sends out a robot to track Good Cop and the little blue blurball. On the open road, Sonic and Good Cop are chatting about some stuff and why Sonic can't stay on Earth or something and I really can't remember when the robot car catches up to them. It fires a harpoon through the window and Sonic dislodges it somehow, throwing him onto the windscreen. Sonic, still being a little upset from the previous conversation, suddenly becomes supercharged. Good Cop points this out and Sonic's just like, oh cool, and takes down the robot truck easily. Good Cop pulls over to make sure Sonic is alright, only to see him doing the FUCKING FLOSS FROM FORTNITE! If I could, I would have walked out of the cinema right there. Unfortunately, Ben had me tied to the chair with frames holding my eyes open a clockwork orange style. They jump back into the truck and head off, fending off a few more robots getting smaller and smaller until it's just a tiny little drone thing that cuts the roof off the truck and plants a bomb on Sonic. They pull over and almost get rid of it, but Sonic ends up getting hit by the explosion because he was trying to make a quip or something, so frankly he deserved it. Jim Carrey gets in a few lines and we end the scene with the possibility of Sonic finally being dead. Good Cop arrives in San Francisco and takes Sonic to his wife in the hopes that she can help what with her being a vet and all. Mrs. Good Cop helps get Sonic back on his feet and takes Good Cop to one side for a moment to question what the hell is going on. Good Cop gives her the long and short of it and actually seems okay with the fact that her husband is now branded as a domestic terrorist. Meanwhile, Mrs. Good Cop's niece gives Sonic a snazzy new pair of pumas that conveniently fit him. He also then decides to fucking floss again Screw this film, you're with me. You're right, you're with me on this, right, Ben? Come on, I know you hated that part too, just admit it. Ben, I'm tied to a chair, give me this. Fine. We get a quick scene of Jim Carrey dancing and doing some signs to help break up the drama. He yells at his bitch boy a little more and figures out how to use the energy from Sonic's quill to power his machines. Back with the protagonists, they figure out Sonic's rings are on the top of this building and head inside to get up onto the roof. Good Cop literally walks up to the front desk, flashes his badge and claims someone is on the roof about to jump and the receptionist just lets this guy, whose face has been all over the news as a domestic terrorist, walk straight on in. Okay. Okay, that's where I draw the line. Seriously. I can believe a hedgehog can be blue and run super fast. I can believe he can shit electricity out of his ass. I can believe there are rings that can open up puzzles to other planets. But this is where I draw the line. The flossing wasn't enough to break you, but him getting into that building, which is feasible given how he shows his police badge, is what breaks you. What's that, Will? Are you defending the film? No, it's more of the fact that of all the things to annoy you, it was the thing that is possible to some extent as opposed to the fucking Fortnite floss. You still defending the film, though. I'm slowly making you like it. Oh, Lord, no. So they all get on top of the stupid building and retrieve Sonic's stupid ring MacGuffins and they're all saying their stupid goodbyes when Jim Carrey rocks up in his flying machine. There's a bit of back and forth between Sonic and Jimmy before Sonic shoves Mr. and Mrs. Good Cop off the building. Horrified at this act, Jimbo the Eggman fires a bunch of missiles at Sonic. Sonic, still not satisfied with ripping off the X-Men only once, rips off the Quicksilver scene again by slowing time and messing around with the missiles. As he's about to throw a ring down for the Good Cops, Jim presses a button and supercharges his egg ship with Sonic's quill, allowing him to move at the same speed as the little ship. Sonic sends the good cop family back to Green Hill just as he gets shot off the building and hitting the ground hard. Sonic being the type to hit the ground running, grabs all the rings and starts to book it through the city, leading to the chase we saw at the beginning of the film, which is actually an interesting concept, being a chase around the world via teleport rings. Unfortunately, it's only used for different scenery and little more. We get Eggman blowing up cars in San Francisco, a moment to joke about the bloody French, a moment to appease the Chinese audiences, and a trip to Egypt before Sonic gets blasted back to Green Hill. Here we get the final confrontation between Eggsy and Sonic. Good Cop shows up and punches Jim again with the help of a ring, but it's still not enough as Sonic just lays dead on the street. Then Good Cop goes into this whole generic talk about Sonic wasn't just an alien, he was a friend, and that Eggman is just a dick for not seeing that. With 
the generic power of friendship flowing through his veins, Sonic gets back up, supercharged, and is ready to take on Jim Carrey for the last time. He bounces around the street, bashing into his flying Eggmobile before opening a ring to some mushroom planet and shoving him through. The people of Green Hill rejoice and decide not to question what the hell just happened. The film wraps up with Good Cop deciding to stay in Green Hill. The government let him off the hook because they didn't really like Jim Carrey either, I guess, and as an apology, some government guy give the Good Cops a gift card for the almighty Olive Garden as he sings his praises to their bottomless salad bowl or some shit. Sonic ends up living happily with the good cops and they all live happily ever after. Oh, and there's also some sequel bait with a shot of Jim on the Mushroom Planet and with Tails appearing in Green Hill looking for Sonic. So what did you think? I'll let you go first before I dispense my thoughts. Personally, I feel the Sonic film was built up a lot in my mind considering I was a big Sonic fan in my childhood. So no matter what was going to be on screen, it wouldn't have lived up to what I thought it would be. Despite those thoughts, I believe we got a solid film good actors, simple but fun story, and a good use of CGI and action scenes. Sure it's not perfect, but I like it, and they can iron out those imperfections in the sequel. Really? Okay, well overall, it wasn't too bad of a film, but I do have my gripes. Sonic doesn't shut up or just talks when there's no need to, some of the jokes really don't land, and it just feels a bit generic at times. My prime example being the he was my friend speech from Good Cop. It's also meme but not in the good way, as it tries to use and reference internet humour but sort of misses the punchline as most films that try that sort of humour do, and it just feels kind of safe. Like it doesn't really push the boat out to tell a unique or interesting story, but rather cover itself in a simple plot that's been done before, alien creature running from the government. Jim Carrey is the best thing about this film for me, hands down, mostly for the fact that it's just Jim Carrey carry because Robotnik is pretty much one-dimensional as villains go, with pretty much no redeeming qualities about him other than the fact he's played by Jim Carrey. You can also tell that the CGI was meant to look different in the beginning, such as Owl Lady looking quite photorealistic while Sonic and the Echidnas are more cartoony. I do give the film some credit though, as the effects and attention to detail are nice and it is clear some love went into making it, even if it meant bankrupting the CGI studio. Though I would like to see the cut of the film with Freaky Sonic and how that would have looked, more out of morbid curiosity than preference. I don't think there's anyone truly worthy of the Goodest Boy Award in this film, so I'm just gonna give it to Robotnik's bitch boy for having to put up with him all the time. Overall, the film was alright. Would I see it again? No. Would I recommend it? I mean, if you're a Sonic fan then go for it. I can't speak for the avid Sonic diehards that read the lore like the Bible, but it's decent for what it is, and it'll keep the kids quiet for an hour and a half if you really need a break from them that badly. Personally, if I had written the film, I would have kept it more in the spirit of the games, with Sonic going to Earth and accidentally bringing Robotnik back to Sonic World, leading to a whole Animal vs. Robots theme more typical of the games. But one thing that's been bothering me is that I feel like I've seen this plot somewhere before, like Hero on the Run, Childish Sidekick, X-Men, the government... You mean Logan? Oh my god, this film is Logan. Is it really? Yes, think about it. Older man plus younger character on the run from an authority with an end goal of getting somewhere and it turns out they have a closer bond than we first thought. That describes a lot of films though. Yeah, but it also describes Logan, so the point still stands. Screw you. Dinner and wine first. Anyway, the review is done. Can I go now? No, Will. You can never leave. You shall be here forever, doing film reviews of my choosing until you do my summoned up spotlight! Yeah, but who's editing the video? What? Damn it! Well, you might not know what I want you to review, but that's not going to help you since I know what I will make you review! Strange, isn't it? Okay, I think I've gotten away from him for now. Uh. Well, I'll be here trying to find another film to review. In the meantime, like the video, share it, do the subscribe thing, and roll the outro. Now, could someone give me a hand? These ropes are a bit tight, I can't undo them.